Welcome to the Collaborative Podcast. I'm your host, Spencer Kraus. Our guest today is Greek Gadget Guru. Uh, Greek Gadget Guru, thanks for coming on. Thanks. It's a pleasure to be here. This is my second time. Yeah, welcome back. So, I, uh, you did a good job. You brought me back in. I appreciate that. I mean, it's, it's good to see you, buddy. It's been a while. Are you guys able to? Are you able to hear me okay? I can hear you pretty good through the uh, through right. the cans. My voice is a little raspy because I was uh, screaming at my uh, computer monitor at Bitcoin and uh, vaping at the same time. So, like, <laughs> spending sixteen hours in front of the computer vaping. I basically took a sixteen hour smoke break, and I don't even smoke cigarettes. Like it was just something. I don't know. Calm my nerves, more or less. That makes sense. I mean, if I'm fucking day trading crypto, I'm going to be hitting whatever makes me more effective at the task, I think. Yeah, it's probably, I would describe it as an addiction, but it's the worst kind of addiction because I make money. And uh, so it just, it's like, I learn nothing. You know, like I will lose money and then the next, you know, the next cycle I'll watch it just, or uh, Sometimes I'll take an entry and I'll make back my losses for the day. And it's like, you took zero, zero initiative. Like there's a whole slew of uh, tasks, that like, you know, steps that you have, like where's Bitcoin, which kind of controls the market. That seems Anyway, true. it's complicated, but um, I got into it because I wanted to be able to afford bigger projects, uh, just to bring it back to the YouTube channel. Yeah, sure. Uh, I, I, when I got into it, it was right before Elon, I think it was right after Elon Musk tweeted that he bought like billion Bitcoin at 30K and then it exploded. Like it was up to 60K, I think with, within a few months. And I was watching, I actually have a friend that retired, uh, in like completely retired at the age of 33, uh, last October. Oh, cool. And he like for lack of better words and I think that he would self-identify he's kind of a degenerate (laughs) he just gambled and it took off and he saw I I think he was looking at you know 10 20 X I mean wow yeah like I mean he's putting made that kind of gain on on any kind of my stock yeah like imagine just putting like 10 K in and you coming back and it's like 100 to 200 X I mean sometimes things like Oh, it's like millions, okay. Yeah, I mean, you can just, you can have, like, Shiba coin or Dogecoin. Like, there's, I know a guy that I do know, Shiba. I do have one friend that got Shiba Inu, um, just when, yeah, like... Yeah, he made, like, 40,000 or something. Like, like, yeah, I think by the time he was out, at one point it was, like, up to 80. He put, like, 500 bucks in. That's sick. And, yeah, imagine yeah. putting 12K. Yeah. Or 10K or something. Yeah, yeah, so, for sure. So, there's a lot of magic internet money that's flowing around, uh... Well, it's it's been interesting to follow Luna these past few days. Like I've heard about it from you and another friend, and yeah, so I, I remember that that voicemail you left me, and I was like, oh shit, it's at like ten cents. And then another friend, with, like I was talking to, like four hours later, he's like, yeah, it's down to a penny. And then I talked to you like four hours after that, you're like, yeah, it's down to a third of a penny. So yeah, I mean, it, just the I volatility made... of those markets is is unheard of. Yeah. Um... I don't know if you know like the backstory. They're still trying to unfold how it happened, but uh, there's a, a a type of what's called a stable currency. It's supposed to be to a dollar, and it's, like it's tether. It's an algorithm. Yeah, like tether. But I think tether is gold backed. Um, and so anyway, this is called UST. They went from they started. Basically, it was it was deep peg, which means it was not at a dollar at any any point, and it went down to I think twenty five cents. Oh wow! So so people were like freaking out, and you could people were when it first went down to like sixty, it shot all the way back up to ninety. So you could have bought like a sixty sixty cents and got a forty percent return, and people were just milking this for what it is. Just riding the wave. I mean, I I screwed up a couple times, and I'm like, oh shit, and then. It'll go, it went from 21 cents to 10 cents, and I think I made like four grand off that. Interesting. Yeah. I'm not even gonna pretend to understand how that works. That well, so it'd be going down to 50%, and then I was 5Xing it, which means that it was actually 250%. That makes sense. So it was, I was leverage trading, essentially. 
Uh, I'll be honest, like leverage trading kind of goes like outside of my, my comprehension. I've never, uh, I've never gotten so into you're, you're you're not buying the currency, you're buying like a futures contract and saying it's going to go at this specific price, it's either going to go up or down. And I just knew it was going to go down no matter what. So I put like a pretty chunk, pretty big chunk of change because it was like, I, would, I remember I waited an entire day for it to like, I was like, I'm gonna buy. So you bought like a put shoot. order. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to buy and then have it shoot up when I'm betting it's gonna go down. Plus, I was leveraging, and it just kept going, going. So finally, I literally went, took a piss, and when I came back, I was like, buy. <laughs> so I made like four grand off that too. I, actually, cool. I think it was more like thirty six hundred, but I, yeah, it was crazy. And then it jumped all the way up to like sixty three, and then I don't know. It is just crazy. And it was one of the busiest weekends I've had in a while. Yeah, it sounds like it. I mean, so I didn't really have time to even take advantage of it until the last remaining like hours. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, whenever I start to get into that stuff, I just get so addicted. Like I don't, I don't trust myself. And uh, yeah, I just pay a guy now to like look at my money, and I'm just like, what should I do, Jesse? Right. And I think, he just tells me what to I, do. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I don't really know if this is, like, where you want the conversation to go. Cause yeah, sorry, I didn't mean to... Well, to I, I like talking anything. about it, because I think it's yeah. interesting. We're, like, we're at the cusp of this digital... Uh, what would be a good word to describe it? Adoption. I mean... Yeah, it fits. Yeah, like, I have a friend that... Uh, He's on a blockchain, his app is, so basically, do you understand like all these different uh, concepts of cryptocurrency? So there's, well, like, I mean, I, there's I, like layer ones, layer twos, stuff like that. I don't, no, I don't know what that means in the so context like, of crypto, unfortunately. Uh, Not yeah. yet, I mean, I'll listen. So basically what you have is these exchange systems where you can either buy money, uh, or you can send, um, it's a blockchain that you can like send transactions, you can send data, like basically, uh, with these NFTs, it's just you have a non fun you it's non fungible, which means like you could trace it back to like this is the original uh, MP3 of this stupid song or like this picture. <laughs> it's just weird. People just want like they want to own the, the sheer thing. ownership of just something like I have something that you can't have. It's just perceived of. exclusivity. Didn't the Wu Tang Clan do that with like a whole album? Didn't they? Yeah. So yeah. actually, my friend, that's where I was going. I got sidetracked. They're like, well, everything now is digital uploads. So uh, essentially there's no like, re resale of records or cassettes or you know, signed stuff. Like you could have maybe a t-shirt, but as far as like the music, it is all completely digital. So this is thought as maybe the next sort of wave of collectibles. That's interesting. I would, like, I don't know, like, I, I feel like a lot of this stuff is not for me, but like, <clears throat> to be the only one that has a Wu-Tang out, like, I'd hate to hoard that from the rest of the world, but that's one where I'd like... I'd, oh, wait, they did it with a Wu-Tang album? Yeah, the Wu-Tang Clan released an album, oh, and they I sold it... Tea for a second. Yeah, no worries. They, they sold it, like, to one person, and then I think, like, nobody else got that album. But you could still listen to it, it's just you wouldn't, like... I, I don't know, like, I, I mean, maybe. I, I haven't really looked into it, but... I guess I was reading the news, maybe it was like four, three or four years ago, where they were talking about like the Wu-Tang Clan just making an album and selling it to like one dude. I mean, they could probably just be on there like, yeah, 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 like, and it just, it looks cool. If you, was, you don't even know what the hell they did, yeah. Yeah, it was like a really cool <laughs> in the background. And it's like, all right, here you go. It was like, technically that's a Wu-Tang album. Yeah. <laughs> I bet you it's better than that, though, because the Wu-Tang Clan tends to... Did you ever to, see that one? There's yeah. this guy on the internet, there's a YouTube video, it's like... Uh, this rap is not speaking real English, but it's like a really catchy beat. And, like, he's like, yeah. And they confronted some guy, like, yeah. Sometimes it just sounds good. Like, I could make a song that is literally just, yeah. <laughs> and it would sound awesome, you would listen to it. And, like, I don't know. I was, I was breaking down the Wu-Tang Clan's lyrics with like another colleague the other day, a, a software engineer that I know, and um, it's like two white dudes talking about the Wu-Tang Clan, and like, basically, um, I don't know, he, I liked it more than he, like, I was like, the Wu-Tang Clan is like fucking high art, was my argument, 
And his argument was that, like, it was a lot of posturing and bragging. And he's like, I don't like braggarts. And I'm like, what do you mean? It's like the Wu-Tang Clan. Some of the best music in the world. Yeah. And, you know, he's like, nah, like, listen, like, protect your neck. It's, like, all about, like, I'll fuck you up. Like, you know, cream, like, cream, get the money, dollar, dollar bill, yeah. Like, it's all just bragging about how much money they have. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. fuck, you're right. <laughs> like, it's some of my favorite music, but yeah, I'll, be, I'll be damned. It's very explicit. I, I learned that word from iTunes when you'd uh, pull up an album and it'd be like, explicit version. <laughs> I'm like, what does this word mean? Do you, do you want the version that isn't, though? I mean, I feel like, I don't know. No, it's like what they would put on the radio. Like, it was always like, or radio edit. Yeah. Because, like, can't play a 16-hour song that, or like you would listen to at like an EDM show or something. It was interesting. There was... Um... Always Sunny did an episode recently. I don't know if you watched that show at all, but they did an episode where they talk. We're like talking about like everything but engineering. <laughs> they, they did an oh, episode. What? I said we're talking about like everything but engineering and and like the YouTube channel and like I'm sure the reason people turned into this. Yeah. But I mean, we'll get there. You know, we'll, we'll talk about it eventually. Don't worry, guys. Um, but uh, what I was gonna say is there, there was an Always Sunny episode out recently where like. The, the joke is that they all voted for Kanye West uh, in the last election, so they're talking about how their their compo- their opponent or their their guy is like you know like a, a Hollywood celebrity um, Washington outsider, and this other character's like oh yeah so you all voted for Trump they're like no Kanye. <laughs> like, oh I see that's funny. Yeah it was, it was really funny because the way they were talking about him you kind of you're thinking it's Donald Trump and then. They, they just, you know, they're like, Kanye's our guy, obviously. <laughs> this isn't that. But then they, they did the radio out? edit of Gold Digger. What's that? Is this, what was this from? From It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's funny. But I, I just thought it was interesting that, like, a show, like, It's Always Sunny chose to play the radio edit. Yeah, so that was, yeah, I feel you. Know, I don't know why they did that, but that <laughs> was an interesting stylistic decision. Hmm. All right. All right, so, I mean, should we talk about, like, actual stuff that we do? Yes. Okay. Um, so, what have you been up to these days? Um, I mean... So, any, I, any... I took the plunge on uh, attending the University of Pittsburgh undergrad for computer engineering. Congratulations. I went to yeah, so I just finished my sophomore year. Um, I... I feel like I want to put this on my channel. This would be a really, really easy, like, video. Yeah. Just to update everyone. Okay, so I'm at Pitt for computer engineering. I'm just going into my junior year. I'm doing good. I'm making friends. That's awesome. Uh, I'm excited for to learn stuff and apply it. So it's it's just what I needed. It's very structure based. Um, you know, part of the part of the I guess uh, one of the things of my channel is that I'm very creative, obviously, but sometimes you don't stick to a certain uh, like scientific method, more or less, and you start to deviate. And then with me being a, like a YouTuber that's just a one-man team, uh, it could be you could burn out really quickly because you're essentially like fighting yourself. You're like constant like if that video flops, like you can't bounce ideas off someone, so it's nice to like, I don't know. I've been in that position professionally where, you know, when you're under-resourced in terms of humans. You definitely need to find, uh, I think, so one of my friends, Joel, he, actually a mutual friend. So this uh, Joel. Joel Johnson. Yeah, Yeah, Joel J. Joel Johnson Johnson from Boxy. Johnson boy. Johnson, yeah. (laughs) Should call Johnson the Jolly. Jolly (laughs) Jolly Johnson. Jolly Joel Johnson. (laughs) I think it should be the Jolly Joel Johnson Ginger. (laughs) The Ginger Joel Johnson. Ginger the Ginger. (laughs) 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 Maybe we say the Jolly Green Minion. Yeah. More of a minion than a. I like the I like the Jolly Ginger Johnson. <laughs> Jolly Ginger Gingers Johnson. Gingers are still hip to make fun of. Like I feel like you can get away with that. Yeah. Uh, what else? So anyway. So computer engineering. Have you have you had Childers? Is he teaching in that department? 
Or is he strictly computer science? He was one of my profs when I was there. Sound does it ring any bells? Fair enough. He's like the dean of the computer science department now. Cool. Yeah. Uh. He was good. He he taught. Um, I think it was CS four four seven when I was an undergrad at Pitt. Um, so it was. Um, like computer architecture, so it was like how processors work. So you learned uh, MIPS assembly language, um, and then you you made a processor that could parse that assembly language hmm. um, in Logisim, and so it was yeah, you're kind of Chinese. Uh, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> well, you were learning computer engineering, so you're, you're well, really I'm not really stuff. that far into the software side, so this, well, this was hardware. I mean, this was like microprocessor design. Okay. But it was also like very low level software or very like high level hardware, I guess. Okay. Yeah. The hardware makes sense. It's a little more like, I don't know. My friend always talks about. Like you were dicking around with like AND gates and OR gates and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Pretty much. But you weren't like at the transistor level, so it was kind of high level hardware. Okay. Low level software. Is that what you learn about in computer science? Well, I mean, most of the computer science <laughs> students hated that stuff because they thought it was, um, I mean, you know, if you study computer science, you probably want to go into software engineering, which means you're probably going to be writing, like, Rust or C++ or, like, you know, something like that, um, or, like, something way higher level. Um, like, I mean, I don't follow all the front-end architectures, but... I mean, I'm kind of talking about the side of my mind. It's been so long since I've coded. I'm, I, I, I don't know a whole lot anymore. Sorry, but. I I think that school teaches you how to solve problems. And uh, I think that the problem is I have to like learn stuff I don't give a shit about. So I just come up with like really good systems, basically. So I'm learning, like, basically I'm condensing all of my learning down to like what's going to be on the exam <laughs> so that I don't have to like store anything else. That makes sense. Uh, I, I would kind of just nerd out. I, w I would get really excited. Uh, like that building a processor assignment I got super stoked on and I was, I was really, really happy. Was this undergrad or? This was undergrad, yeah. But I was, I, I just, I, I did it like two weeks ahead of when it was due because I was really having fun. Wow. Like, I don't know. Just, I yeah, mean, some of the stuff my friend who was a senior was taking, like, scared me. But then, yeah, this was this was maybe, like, a junior course that I took. Um, and then, something else you should know if you're a Pitt student is you can cross-register for free in the CMU course every semester. So, um, right. I did that. I, I always maxed those out once I found out about the program. So, wait, you can take a class at CMU? Yeah, yeah, you can uh, you can take a CMU class for free every semester. Uh, it's if you're at CCAC or Pitt or CMU, you can cross register in one of the other universities' uh, programs. Hmm. So it was I, I took mechatronic design uh, with the Professor John Dolan, who was like a retired Army Colonel, hmm. which I didn't realize what that meant at the time. But I talked to someone who was in the Marines, and it means he had like ten thousand people under his command. Wow. Apparently, yeah, it's insane, right? I'm like developing way more respect for veterans than I used to have. And then um, I, I took uh, Howie Chosett's uh, General Intro to Robotics, which I took that in three pit courses one semester, and just Intro to Robotics was harder than like all three pit courses combined. Yeah, I think yeah. you mentioned that. Yeah. But you probably learned a lot. I did. You've got assembly language on your mask, by the way. Oh. Looks like 7F, F3. That's, that's interesting. I guess not assembly, just hexadecimal. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's just the code that, I guess there's a code that is assigned each class that's so you can connect your phone to it. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. It's pretty cool uh, technology. I don't know if I made a comment about this. So this right now is a mask that uh, you probably have seen on my channel and you can connect to an app on your phone and there's all these different types of designs and little animations <laughs> and you can customize it. I'm loving the anime eyes. Wait, which one do you want? It's like the, uh, oh nice.
what I was thinking about doing actually was uh, like filming. So I don't know if when you, if you like transition in between like who's talking. Like sometimes you might do a close up. I, I, we thought about doing that, and then it and just that would be good for this episode because then I can take a bunch. You know what B roll is? Yeah, yeah. Because we can take some B roll of all these different emotions, and then you could take like a close up from this shot and be like. And that way it would it would appear as if like if you said something funny or like astonishing, it would show the exclamation points, you know what I mean? And you know, you would just zoom in at that moment, but you would it wouldn't be necessarily you would just plug in this So there's there's a technical limitation on that unfortunately, which is that OBS is set up right now just to capture like that split screen view that you see over there. So I don't actually record multi-track video on this podcast right now. I'm no. open to doing it. Um, well, these, these are all these are all 1080p cameras. Oh wait, because you're it's really. I mean, why don't you just edit it? I mean, you could, right? You'd just be like looking at screen grabs because isn't it recording right here? It is, but it, there's there's a computer under this desk, and then it records to this. And then what that looks like is, is this. So it, instead of recording individual screens, it's recording the split screen with the, the logo on the top. Gotcha. Um, but I mean, I'm sure we could dick with it and, and do screen grabs. It would just be uh, lower resolution. Still higher than the first episode we did. I mean, thank you for noticing all the, all the new equipment. And, yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, I've like just been lot. slowly upgrading the studio um, and buying more expensive stuff and getting audio engineers to refine it and, and make the system work better. Um, we've had a bunch of fails over the over the episode <clears throat> recording. Um, I feel like you could be one of those infomer- uh, like commercials that you'd see online where you click like come back and it's like, stop right now and listen, because this could change your life. <laughs> I would have to kill myself. For shame. <laughs> and it's like, and it's like, basically, they're like, Everyone thinks that the market's this, but really, it's about digital real estate. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that one the other day. It's like hilarious. digital real estate is. I going call to, it digital real estate. It's how much does, how much money did that cunt spend on that that we've both seen that at? <laughs> exactly. But like the idea is that you own this digital land, and it, it, you could literally have a, an unlimited amount of it, but you could set up a store. So when you're on your Oculus Rift, you could go into the metaverse and buy something from that person's property. And that way you can make money because they're not making any more land. So it only makes sense that we're gonna basically expand into, basically to the point where we could just integrate like Tron. You know yeah. I mean? Well, I mean, the whole premise of crypto is kind of similar to that, right? I mean, it's, it's the fact that there's a finite amount of resources, and so you've got these digital assets as well, right? Or is that right. I guess how do you create value of something? It's it's the scarcity. I scarcity think. of yeah. it. So yeah, I guess the scarcity of there. Oh, there's land in this. One of them that comes to mind is called mana, or it's a and it's basically called decentral land. And there have been some artists that have hosted. Uh, like concerts so people playing the game could experience it. It hasn't gotten to the point yet. You're still staring at like a computer screen. Yeah. But I'm sure it's gonna get to the point where like you can just walk around. And I know if I if I'm allowed to talk about well, I'm allowed to say whatever I want, but I might get some people in trouble if I talked about some of the things I knew about what's going on with some of this stuff. Oh really? Uh, I should probably keep my mouth shut. <laughs> There's some interesting moves going on with, with like some of the developments for the metaverse, I'll put it that way. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I know Facebook just changed their name and they pretty much showed exactly what I'm describing and they own Oculus. So they're definitely positioned probably the best of any other company to push this. And I mean, they're probably going to have a proprietary like uh, world where you can only use the Oculus to like actually access it. But I'm sure they... That's interesting. Do you, you think they'll start giving octopuses a, 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 Oculus is away? Oculus is away. Yeah, just to get you hooked on on the metaverse. I mean, I could see. Got. I could see what what happened is it would start with influencer marketing. Yeah. And then they probably would say, okay, we'll send you this Oculus. You can keep it for like ninety days, and you're going to create content, and you, we're going to pay you if you make money. You don't think they would just give it to you? Like, I mean, having. Uh, I mean, you have to like. 
live that life. You have to actually, I don't know, show some merit of why you can influence others. Yeah, yeah. So... But I mean, like, someone like you that's got, like, you know... Oh, 100%. A thought load of YouTube subscribers. They, and, they would probably send me an Oculus. Yeah. <clears throat> so, sometimes it's just about asking, oh, my voice sounds a little better. Nice. I mean, tea is, tea is magical. <clears throat> I, I drink more tea than a British pirate. I uh, quite, quite like it. What do you think about my eyes, by the way? I kind of like it. It's it's growing on me. I'll be honest. Um, a little splinty, like, yeah. I mean, this looks good. It, what would be cool is if it. It's got like I said before, like a kit vibe. Came in and out. Yeah. I mean, you're studying computer engineering. Like you could probably modify that program. Dude, but I'm so fucking lazy. <laughs> I want to just like, I'm like Tom Sawyer. I want to be like, look how cool this is, and then just like, make someone paint my fence. <laughs> it's not that I'm trying to be a dick, it's just that, like, that's all my brain knows how to do. <laughs> yeah, but, I mean, I'll create stuff, but I've gotten to the point where, like, I've had, I've worked so vigorously in, on a specific project that I think is just going to go viral, and, like, nobody watches it. You're like, there is, so, there's basically... Well, I mean, like, you and I have spent time on a project like that, where... Yeah, but... I'm not as professional as you. I'm a perfectionist. Yeah. Probably to my detriment at times. I mean, most of the stuff I do, I saw my earlier stuff, I actually wish I would have kept doing it. It was perfect. All you had to do was like, you didn't have 3D printing, you didn't have this and that. It was literally just like, you have duct tape, you have, and you have stuff, and you have glue, <laughs> and you have like a staple gun and nails, and that's it. You can't weld because like, it's the zombie apocalypse or something. Yeah. Yeah, and like, you could have welding equipment, but like realistically, like, someone's not gonna Fucking go, battery. zombies are coming, trying to come in, like, time to weld shit. Like, no. I mean, they've got that montage in so many if movies. If they weld, they probably <laughs> own like, you know, plenty of things to, to fight back with. Yeah. I don't know. No, that's interesting. Well, you mentioned before when we talked about it, like accessibility, right? Like the fact that you're make you're showing a way to make a thing that like anybody could do. We're like welding, <coughs> you know, skill and electrical access, and you know, a welder, which not everyone has one. Well, I guess the point that I'm getting to is it was quick content. I probably could have filmed it with like a chest rig or like face view, just like me just like grabbing shit. That's what I'm good at. Like just grab this, grab that, duct tape this, rubber band that, and you just create, it's more, I'm more of like a sculptor of junk and, <laughs> uh, than an engineer. And so like, I don't want to sit there and create, you know, the, I don't know, the state, the, the, the glue and like what's actually in the glue that makes it sticky, but that would be, that would be really cool. Yeah. Um, like I know a YouTube channel that's trying to make a web shooter and it's basically like DIY silly string. They yeah. can make it in like super amounts and it's a, uh, they put this stuff in it that has like a really high, high vapor pressure. What is it doing? No, so I was just giggling cause I, this is just me being a stupid idiot, but there was another episode of Always Sunny where the guy... Do they just like get high on glue or something? Well, there, there's episodes about that. <laughs> there's, there's another one where um, the one character, Frank, like gets this uh, hair dye business going where he's just using Chinese motor oil <laughs> to make hair dye. <laughs> wow. And I just thought it was hilarious. So that's that's what I was giggling about. I'm sorry. <laughs> I should have been paying more attention to what you were saying. Sorry. Yeah. I'm uh, having fun. Yeah, me too. It's Good um, analogy. It's been a minute. I think it's like a hair in my mask. Ew. It's disgusting. Gross. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I might be, uh, this, this is a big Manhattan we poured. <laughs> so, anywho. Um, but okay, so you're talking about like, um, going like low fidelity. So duct tape. I don't even know what I'm talking about anymore. Well, you were talking about so, like, like, simple content. So, if you want to be successful, but... all right, this is probably a good part to put in. Like, what did it take to be successful on YouTube? Like, what did I do that made me stand out? And what, did I, knowing that I have, I mean, I'm like at six hundred and fifty thousand followers, so it's sizable enough that like, okay, you said you talk about your general. 
Okay, and he was able to command. He had ten thousand men under. This was a colonel, but colonel. yeah. Okay, colonel. Sorry, he had ten thousand men under him. That's crazy. But guess what? I have six hundred and fifty thousand. So fuck <laughs> you. <laughs> Fair okay, enough. Okay, boomer. You got your ten k. I'm just joking. I love veterans. He definitely is a boomer. I mean, but like every okay. colonel I know is. I, I know two colonels. So they're both boomers. I've seen these uh, machine learning algorithms where they basically will play a game like StarCraft against two different opponents and they'll have like, do you know anything about StarCraft? Yeah, I used to play StarCraft too a decent amount. So like the Zerg, they would just like take like 10 million Zerg versus like 5 million, not for, maybe not million, but you know, uh, against like all these Marines and they would just see how long they could last before they were just totally overwhelmed. And the Zerg always won. He was like, because, I don't know, there was just... Because there were more of them? Maybe it's the lag time of, like, between the death. I think it created, like, a shield. Basically, when the Zerg, Zerg would die, it would create, like, a, a blank patch where, like, the weapons weren't able to fire because it was hitting the other Zerg. And oh, that's so, like, interesting. they had cover, so they were able to, like, die and then advance and then die and advance. And they just basically... So it was, like, a zombie swarm sort of deal? Yeah, like. so five, 650,000 versus 10,000. It's the Zerg. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, for sure. Or the uh, the Russians in World War Two. I mean, there's <laughs> yeah been plenty Russian of examples of time. I, I am a Russian Jew, yeah. That's, that's, that's really cool. I, <laughs> the Russian part really makes it awesome. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's it's funny because I actually, for a time about this, like, I, I have a German name. I'm not going to think of it like, you definitely do look Russian. Yeah. Like if I like put Vladimir Putin's head next to yours, <laughs> I would see like, so you both have uh, hair issues or, or lack thereof. Yeah, I'm bald as shit. That's, does, that's he have, does Vladimir Putin have hair? I don't know. I mean, no, no, he, he definitely could get he, hair. He has, like, you guys have the same exact haircut. Yeah. And, but he doesn't have facial hair. And he yeah, has it's a very been a strong recent jawline. Change. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm Slavic, but. <laughs> I, have a Ger- I have a German name, which is interesting. So, I um, every time I go to like Switzerland or Germany. Why are you I, talking about Germany? Well, because my name is Krause or Kraus, right? But the, the way that they pronounce it there is Krause, and um, everybody's like, "Oh, Krause," you know, like which means in German the one with curly hair, which I don't have, but. I think it. One, I think at some point there were like a bunch of Germans in my family that were like, "We're not Germans, we're Russian." You know, and so. Huh. I don't know. I mean, that or I mean, like you said, like, I, I definitely have Slavic traits. So yeah, I'll but like there's Russian some things friends. that's like you say bacon versus in Greece, it's bacon. <laughs> it's the same fucking thing. Yeah. Bacon. I had a good time in Greece. I I went pretty recently actually. Nice. Did I tell you about that? I was I was in Crete. I wasn't like Greece proper, but. Really. Yeah. So I actually, the most fun I had in Crete was I, I was in this little uh, area and um, it was like a, a harbor and uh, there were a bunch of bars and I was basically trying to get something to eat and I, I kept going and everyone's like, well, we're, we're not serving food, but we have drinks. And so it's like a real tourist economy. So at each place I was like, oh, fuck it. I guess I'll get one drink and then I'll go to the next place. So I was like f- five drinks in and finally I got up to the, like this village and this one dude is like, you know, um, I'll be honest with you, uh, nowhere is going to serve you food at this hour except this one little souvlaki joint. He's like, I'm so sorry. And I'm like, why are you sorry? Like, I'm get some souvlaki. I'm like, shit, that sounds good. Oh, yeah, souvlaki. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I went to this joint and there was a guy smoking a cigarette out of the corner of his mouth and drinking a beer and like just making <clears throat> euros and souvlaki and just talking so much shit. Like one malaka, two malaka. <laughs> oh my like god! Making fun of the dudes. I totally like, see it. Yeah, it's fucking. He had a big mustache. He had a. I think he had like a beard. He had like facial hair. Uh, he had a huge gut. He must have weighed like three hundred pounds. Oh, I can totally see that. Yeah, and he was like he talked like Mr. Panos. Was like, he was just a grandpa. Yeah, he, well, he was he was younger than a grandpa. Like he, he was like he was like dad age. He was like he was like maybe like like a he, younger was boomer. He speaking English. He was speaking English to me, but like Greek to the other guys. In, in the restaurant. Good so, thing English is such a stupid language. <laughs> so many people, like, you don't have to, like, think about how fucking easy it is. Like, you literally can just say, 
all you have to do, um, change the gender or whatever, is like, say he, he did. Like in Greek, there's like a masculine apple. And if, <laughs> no, actually, uh, so Milo, since it ends in O, like their, their language implies that apples are male. Because <laughs> you don't say Mila. Well, French is like that too, right? Mila like, means to say. So you say Milo, and then like, if you're talking about a man, there's a different, there's a masculine and a feminine, you know what I mean? English is just like, he, he ran. There's probably, I think that there's like a... Well, like, it doesn't exist in a lot of languages. Yeah. Yeah. So like, that's, that's an interesting difference. That's you means thing. What, what is it? Thing. What's the word though? Like a thing. Yeah, yeah, but you, you said it. Like the ina to o tetio, tetio. So like since it ends in o, like you have to say o tetio, which is yeah. saying like it's a masculine thing. Or like, <laughs> o, o Pavlos yeah. is like uh, the os, o Pavlos, like o o. But if you say like ye stelliani, it's like, you know what I mean? There's not that con, uh, I don't know what you want to call it. Yeah, English is stupid. <laughs> so everyone's I'm, I'm just really happy I met this guy that was calling everyone malakas and, and making me fucking souvlaki. Was it good? It was really good, yeah. It was, <clears throat> it was my best experience in Crete. And I mean, you know, I had like all sorts of delicious octopus, but just hanging out with this ball busting, <clears throat> you know, like gut out, hilarious uh, dude. I mean, that was so much fun. And um, I, I had a great time. So, did you, was this a self journey? I mean, yeah, I was traveling solo. I, I went to another restaurant like a few days later, and this guy like poured me a shot of rakia. Oh yeah, and like it's yeah. like alcohol, but they just put a bunch of like <laughs> leaves in it or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So he he poured me a shot of raki, and um, he. You know, I was like, well, thanks, man. You know, what's your name? And he's like, dude, we fucking hung out like two or three nights ago at that Suvlaki place. Oh. Uh, How do you not remember me? And I was like, I was very drunk that night. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. It's fun times. Yeah, but he, he just started free. cracking up. Yeah, he thought it was funny. And so I, I really enjoyed that. I kind of wish I'd gone to mainland Greece as well. Like I, I met a lady from Athens who was just like really cool in the airport. And I'm like, that just seems like it would have been a different vibe, like more metropolitan. Totally, it sounds like you're in the village or something. Well, I mean, all of Crete, right? So like I I, I rented this Audi A3 and, and just drove like all over the all over the island in this convertible. And um, just like 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 this American jerk, right? I was sounds driving- fucking sick. I was just driving like a hundred kilometers an hour, like around these little turns and stuff. And like, yeah. I, I'm sure Hertz got a bunch of traffic tickets for me <laughs> when I got back. But um, you know, I, I it was fun. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. And um, but the, the one thing I didn't love about Crete is it was like a lot of tourism, and so I feel like I didn't get to know like as many just like Greek people. And, and just, you know, hang out organically as I would have gotten to do if I'd been in, you know, like a more mainland Greek spot. So that, that's my only regret, I think. Hmm. Yeah, I've never really gone clubbing in Greece. Uh, when I, I feel like, I, so I have two sisters, I'm the middle child, and I feel like my sisters never wanted to, like, if I go left, they would go right. Like, I'd go to Greece. <laughs> I'm the oldest like, child. My Siblings are like that too. I would, yeah. If I, like when I went to Greece, I wanted to like party and get belligerent and go to all the clubs. And they're like, no, we don't want to. I'm not yeah. gonna fucking go out by. My, I mean, it's one thing to go out as a guy alone, but when you're like in another country and you don't really speak the language too well, it, it would be nice to have some companions. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But uh, the one night I went with my cousin Nico and he like just knew <laughs> this guy area. sounds like a fucking goon from everything you've told him Nico is he has, un, he has infinite confidence <laughs> it's just like a laser beam of confidence like it, it will instantly vaporize and it buy that. just like works really well on life <laughs> yeah it seems to yeah 
Uh, Seems so like he gets, he gets whatever he, gets he wants. His, he gets his way a lot of times, and it's kind of funny. Like you did, like the moralistically worst thing. He's like, yeah, whatever. Anyway, uh, he took me out. I got really freaking drunk, and the next morning I was still drunk. Basically, I was fucked up and then drunk, and I went to a monastery. Went to a monastery with Why? my family. Oh, because your family wanted to. Okay. My family went to a monastery, and I was in Saint Yerasimov's tomb, <laughs> or the not tomb. Um. So he's the patron saint of mental illness. Wait, actually? Yeah, because he when when the Turks were coming in, uh, they were just like massacring like priests and whatnot, because they were all a lot of them were all Muslim and whatnot. And so he had to hide. Turks are like dicks to every adjacent country. Yeah. And so they had to hide. They hid him in... I have lots of Turkish friends, by the way. Don't counsel me for that. (laughs) They, um... He hid in this, like, this little chamber underneath the church. And he had to crawl into a hole in the wall. And so, like, he lived in this hole in the wall. Like, he probably, like... I don't know. He started kind of... There's, like, markings on the wall of, like, him counting the days... Oh, uh, brutal. Yeah, and he, and, but like, there was also like him like writing stuff. And while he was down there, like, I'm sure there was like oxygen deprivation or something, but like, he started to really lose his mind. And like, maybe not lose his mind, but he started I mean, having visions. Just solitary confinement can really, you know, mess a person up, right? So right, sure. true, true. Yeah. So um, I'm down in this area, and I, I swear to you, there's like, there's, um, I was, I was hearing like a weird echo, and it was it was kind of like, also quiet, if that makes any sense. Yeah, um, I think I can get that. It was like you were in a confined space; you could like hear your heartbeat or something like that, you know. And so, that was really weird. And I remember coming upstairs and being like, I felt like I I was, I felt almost like, like I was high or something. <laughs> I thought that like. That just from being whole, in that area. Yeah, I thought that the whole there was like holiness that was just like blessing me, and it was just like and it was just like fixing my brain or something. You know That's I mean? interesting. And then I went upstairs because I just felt so like elated, more or less, I guess is a good word. And um, I was just like, you were down there for so long. There's very little oxygen supply, and I was like, oh, I was just suffocating. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty funny. Actually. It was just like it was just like uh, yeah. So, but I guess I think that random error always pops up as like a, as like a default in, as like a cover up of the breadcrumbs of kind of a higher power. Wait, how do you mean? So I'm trying to get my head around that. Like, there's no saying of whether or not I actually had like a a divine or like a, a divine moment, but it was... The fact that there was this woman said that there was lack of oxygen, oh. sort of like added to like, well, maybe you're just, just cheapens what you experience. Yeah, it cheapens what I experience. That's the really good way of putting it. Good job. Thanks. <laughs> um, I've been called like articulate like built, before. I feel like that's like built. <laughs> Others like, say I'm a bullshitter. <laughs> that's built into like the matrix, which I don't really believe. like. I think that. I think that there's like, you know, a set of laws in physics and that in a sense is like a matrix. You know what I mean? If you think about yeah, it. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a matrix C is essentially just like multiple points in a frame. Wait, the, I, I thought you meant a matrix like the movie The Matrix. You're talking about like actual matrices in math? Well, I mean, the only real distinguishment from the matrix is that like there are these rules that Basically, you can bend if you know that they What's are present or something. System of equations. What's that? <laughs> the system of equations versus like a Coen Brothers movie. Hmm. Yeah. I don't know. It, was it Coen Brothers? No, it was the Wachowskis. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Well, they're ladies now. Yeah. Well, fair enough. Yeah, the latest Matrix was like from the Wachowskis. So. Yeah. What did you think of that, by the way? Did you see the, the new not, one? I mean, I wasn't really impressed. I didn't think it was great either. I, I didn't hate it but I didn't I also think part of it though is like the Matrix was never like really great like I think it was just like you see that as a kid and it's it's amazing it's also never been done before like nobody's ever you know like dodged a bullet on screen or 
shot, you know, in like 360 like that. And so I, th I think the fact that they were the first to do that made it really special at the time, where now it's kind of a little cheesy. I mean, even if you were to rewatch the originals, I feel like it's not much different than the new one that came out. I don't know. Maybe I'm just a cynical bastard. Yeah, I definitely see what you're saying. It's a good point. I mean, there are superheroes like Superman, but this element of a virtual world that we all live in and this is all just an illusion. It's being programmed into us using our bodies as batteries for the actual system itself. Yeah, the battery premise wasn't really like believable as an engineer, right? Cause, well, I mean, I wasn't an engineer. I was 12 years old when this crap came out. But it kind of does make sense, though. Really? I mean, like, there's got to be a better battery than a person. I mean, like, we consume, like, 2,000 calories a day. I mean, that's a lot of fuel just to keep the system running. I mean, we're, we're not really utility. We're, we're just using up resources. I mean, I don't know. Maybe I'm just being a cynical bastard. I don't know. I mean, I think what you end up having is just quantity. I mean, think about how many, even if you took, like, how many billion people are on the Earth? Uh, I, I think probably up to like eight or nine at this point. Eight or nine, guess. True. billion. I, I okay. speculated. Eight or nine. I looked it up. Eight, so it's lower than our than our current uh, our debt <laughs> as a nation. Uh, sure. Yeah. So I think it's trillion. Like, so there's like six trillion people on Earth. Again, I'm, I'm yeah, like, I don't think we have. I think we're what? at billions. What? I think we're at billions of people at this point. Okay. So billions. Mask, stupid. Yeah. All right. I mean, you can take it out. I know you've been trying to save me on masking. Yeah, it, it fucking hurts. Sorry, like, it's like smashing me. Yeah. Oh. Yo, fuck this thing. <laughs> it's up to you. I'm not gonna stop you. Mask reveal. Face reveal time, bitches. <laughs> yeah, fuck it. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> I feel like I'm exposing myself naked. Please, please link I'm my channel. Coming no. out. It's like your channel is so much bigger than mine. I agree, Greek Guru. Yeah. I need to sit like fucking. I am Greek at. How should I say this? Yeah, I'm Pavlos. Yeah, Pavlos. Or Pavlos just Paul. Yeah. Not. I think ten percent of my friends. Pavlos being the esteemed Paul. Ten percent of my friends call me Pavlos. Everyone else calls me Paul. I have yeah. another group that called me PJ. I was from middle school. PJ? What does the J stand for? James. Paul James. Paul James. Oh, nice. Didn't realize that was your... Is that like a middle name? PJK, yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I mean, Greeks, they name their son, their, their sons after their father, and then their middle name is, their, is their, their father's. So it's like, Grandpa is the first name. So because I... Yeah. Like a cascade. Yeah, cascade. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. I don't know if you guys do that at all. So your kid would be like, um, so-and-so, Pavlos. That would be James, James Paul Kiros. Wait, what, what's that? So my dad's name is James. Yeah. His middle name is Michael. Uh, Michael Paul, I think. Yeah. Uh, Michael Paul Kiros. Yeah. So it's G and... Oh, so the Kiros is always... I'm an idiot. Sorry. It has yeah, to be drinks, idiot. too. Yeah, because I mean, unless you're a woman, then you lose the name. So I'm the last, I'm the last born Kiros. I feel like, like I do a lot of dumb shit, and I always get away with like, or not get away with it, but like gambling with this crypto stuff. <laughs> I'm just like, dude, literally, one day I lost four thousand, and the Brutal. next day, I yeah, I'm like, I fucking hate myself. And then I won nine hundred, and I was like, okay, fine, like getting there. Then I won like 13 and 36, I was like, all right, by this rate, we're fucked. And then I like took a break and I started watching some YouTube content. Like when in doubt, just fucking educate yourself. Yeah, smart. I was just like, oh my God, I've been doing this wrong. I'm trying to reinvent the wheel and there's just rules that are already like, this is very defined. If you were to divide, if you were to create an algorithm, this is the flaw in human psychology. So don't sell because it's about to explode. This is the pattern you want to look for. So I'm just like, shit, this is good. So then I made, then I made 2,600, then I lost 600, then 900. And then my last, my last trade, I made 3,850. Sweet. So it sounds like <laughs> your gains are more than your losses. Yeah, so my gains are more than my losses. And I'm like, shit, like, 
the whole point of this was I want to be able to create like large scale projects, but I also was talking about how I just want to have like duct tape. There's a lot of cool things you can make with power tools. <laughs> like there's this one, um, so I have this tool at home that's like a H, it, it basically allows you to fill like an HPA tank. It's a high pressure air tank. So it's not CO2, so it doesn't get cold. What's the temperature? I mean, what's the pressure you're looking at? To be I don't know, like hundreds of thousands, like, I don't know, thousands. Yeah, okay, so like 1,500 PSI or something would be concerned. Yeah, I think like the highest component is like 3,000 PSI. So okay. everything's pneumatic. And, um, but also you have these like lithium ion batteries. And um, I remember there were these like pole chainsaws that were supposed to like cut branches. Yeah, I've like, seen those. What if I just like created like a second one and then just like, I like threw twice as much voltage through it and just remove all the like resistors and stuff like and just fucking rev this thing up and just go like nah, nah, and just go crazy so you have so it's overheating but you only yeah but it you know what would be cool was if it was like field if it was in first person and it was uh in field so like you couldn't just like go to your fucking shit like you if you wanted to solder you had to use a soldering pen and you have to cult and you like, I'm getting really into it, but like, you know what a soldering pen is it uses like butane? Like a soldering iron that's butane powered? Yeah, exactly. Okay. So like you have that, you have duct tape, you have solder so you can do the wires. Just go fucking make something. I don't know, what you, what would you do? I mean, if I wanted to make anything with a soldering iron. So like zombies are coming in yeah. and you're able to. I would reach for a gun. Okay, so zombies are coming in. Unless you can still carry, you which you're only gonna have like maximum five, like you know maybe like twenty bullets. Yeah, no yeah. one's gonna carry like you know magazines. Some people do, but it's weird. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so you're you're at Home Depot and fucking zombie apocalypse breaks out and like they're swarming the fucking place. Do you really want a gun? Like yes, temporarily, but then you want some like fucking weapon that's just gonna slice through them. What would you build if you had basically free access to all materials in, in the mall? What if you're in a or, gun shop? <laughs> like, I mean, there's gotta be. It's not as fun. Like, yeah, we all seem like zombies get killed, but creativity of like, all right, I would take an axe and I would. An axe, like, just by itself, is probably creative. I mean, like, helpful though, right? Yeah, but you also have to swing, and if you miss, you're off balance completely, and they can... So that's when they get you. Yeah, and you have yeah. to be skilled with it. So, like, what's something that's, like, foolproof? Like, a chainsaw, you literally... Bunch of axes on, like, a lawnmower? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I, there was this one thing. So, it was um, one of those poles that was extending. Yeah. And I wanted to modify this to make it more powerful, but I, I think it's pretty powerful as is just using some physics properties. So, it was a... Um, a pole that had this like basically a, a band or something like a pulley system so when you opened it it extended from both sides so it extended here and then it extended in front of the handle so that's pretty you go cool. from like something like this to something that's almost it's like the double-sided lightsaber basically right exactly yeah and so but what i found you could do is you could go like this and it would stab 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 <laughs> and it was like so fluid just stab 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 like you wouldn't have to thrust it would just be this thing so if you had something that was sharp enough, which like a like an at, like a spear, um, maybe you just have like a knife and you just like a big Bowie knife or something and you just duct tape the fuck out of it. It's like that would be freaking sick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And it'd be quiet because like a chainsaw is like and the zombies are coming. Seventy in. zombies. It's are just like, like I heard that. Like. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. And a gun obviously would be bad in a zombie apocalypse. That's the catch. Because you have to like sacrifice shooting with attracting a, a larger horde. I mean, if you had enough ammunition, it wouldn't matter. I don't think. Yeah, I mean, if you had unlimited, but maybe you could use like the blank rounds from those like um, those pneumatic hammers, or like those like they're they're. Uh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah a hammer or whatever they are. Like they could like shoot something in a concrete. Yep. I yeah, it's like a twenty-two round, right? With like a blank crimped over. Right, yeah. yeah. I have uh, I have one of those at home, and the only problem is that in order for it to fire, you have to push this thing down to release the safety, and then it'll go, you know, and shoot it. Yeah. But I didn't get, I was like, you could probably put an arrow in this thing, and it would just slice, you would just nail it, and it, you could have, like, a magazine and make this, like, automatic crossbow. 
Did you do that? No, but that'd be sick. And I don't know. Yeah. I would love to do that. Yeah. I probably could do it if I could let my let go of my ego. Because I want everything to look like an engineer made it. Which just... I mean, I'm like that too. The process is so fucking grueling. If I was just like, okay, here's the fucking premises. I have limited time because I am going to die otherwise. What the fuck would I do? And... I don't know, that'd be sick. That'd be a really cool sponsorship. Like, okay... There's only, you have two hours, like, you can do whatever the fuck you want, and then you have to, like, kill these zombies. Yeah. And it's just, like... But they'll leave you alone for two hours, because they're nice. Yeah, and it's, like, a sponsorship from the store. Yeah. It's Home Depot gift card for, like, a grand. Honestly... We got this unlimited Home Depot gift card. If there's anything that could be used for loading, that counts, too. So Mm -hmm. I think what I would do is I would, um... So I'd take one of those, like, chairlift, you know, those, like, forklift things, right? Um, like a JLG, like, scissor yeah. lift, basically? Right, yes. Yeah. Like, to get up to the... And I would probably make that into a tank. And yeah. I would use, like, a lift from the car section to lift up an, a lawnmower. And then I would just fucking literally duct tape a lawnmower to the side of this forklift. <laughs> 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 they would figure out a way to climb it, though, eventually, right? But I would run into them, and it would just yeah. chop them. You could just keep collapsing it and, like, chopping arms off stuff because those are all pinch points well you would armor yourself in this thing so like for the zombies to get you they'd have to like totally overwhelm you but yeah. i mean you could probably put a lot of stuff on there if it's gas powered and just like and then if you I think those things tend to be electric but the lawnmowers no the the scissor lifts oh, oh um yeah but that's fine i mean yeah you could probably just use a generator to like charge the batteries. Yeah, sure. There's probably gas there too. Yeah, I'll buy that. That'd be sick. Just take one of those like John Deere's, put like four on each side. What if you put, what if you literally put like one on each corner and you just were just this like, this machine that like if a zombie came in it would just chop them to bits. <laughs> and like no matter what angle they came at, it was just like they were being, and then and if you could like somehow spin the thing, just infinitely. <laughs> just like zombies are just being like, Nyeh. it's like chip ham. <laughs> you would definitely need something stronger than a lawnmower for that. Because I feel like a lawnmower is fucking up your arm. It's not going to amputate it. Um, I could be. I mean, I hate to be a cynical bastard. No, I mean, those things, are, those things are strong as fuck, dude. Really? You might be right. I, well, so the problem is that a lot of them uh, are have fail safes de- designed into them. Yeah. So like... I mean, modern sure. farming equipment, for sure, would, would mess a person up. Yeah. Yeah. And, like, modern industrial equipment, too. That would be, be disgusting. <laughs> like, do you just have, like, a... Um, what are those things called? Mulcher? <laughs> and a person. I, would take I mean, a that's, mul- like, the premise of Fargo. I would take the, the mulcher, and I would just, like, <laughs> fucking ride it through the shop with like a big shovel on the end of it. So it just, I just constantly like a whale eating, just like krill. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That would probably work. Waves. I don't think you can put a safety on something like that or it wouldn't even do its job. Yes, yeah, or like, and eventually you just get like, big well, I've arms. Seen, I've seen and those the like- Pneumatic arms are just like, ball, ball. Not even, not even pneumatic. The, the way I've seen it done, I can't remember what mechanism I saw this in, but I've seen it with like a four bar linkage where you've got like a crank arm on the back and then you've got a slider right here. Oh, it just goes from here. Well, yeah, and so yeah. it's just alternating like blue, 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 blue. <laughs> <laughs> Zombies are just like. <laughs> yeah. And they just look like chip. Where, where the hell have I seen that? I, I've seen it on something. Ah, it's, it's not there. Yeah. Bye. <laughs> that would work. It's just like wah 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 wah, and you just put like a stake, and the stake is just hanging over it, and they're just like. Mah. The zombies going for steak though. I thought they were more into brains, like human brains. All right, like, so we just like find a fucking human, we sacrifice him for the greater good. So it's like the blood boy in um, <coughs> the, the, I Mad Max, brains are basically. Stupid. I mean, so you okay. just get you just got a person that's willing to like be bait, basically. But they're in a position it's like, where they well, can't It's like get the Walking out. Dead. Yeah. But, like, for a couple of hours. That'd be pretty funny, actually. Like, I feel like to, to just have, like, a human at some point, and it's totally, un- you would have to be insured for so much money <laughs> to be able to do that. 
He's like my death for an inmate, and you just but take they, his they have to they have to still be alive for zombies to be enticed by them, right? Otherwise, it's just another zombie. I mean, they're not gonna have real zombies in like the actual thing when you test yeah. the weapon. It's gonna be like it's fair. So we don't need to sacrifice a human being. For the you sake you of could throw life. like a pig carcass into it. <laughs> I don't know, man. They they will eat anything. They'll eat freaking like warthogs. Really? It's good eating. Uh, I mean, I, I agree. I, I... And they have brains, but like, how do you get to the brain? You gotta like eat your way into it. And there's a skull. Yeah, I mean, you would think like using a tool would really help with cracking that. How skull. the fuck can a zombie eat your brain? Well, I think what it probably comes down to is most zombies don't just want brains. They want like, eat. Flesh. Yeah, but for but, some reason they're craving brains, but they're not going to get to it because it's armored pretty well. So I think what happens is like your body has. Matt, I think zombies are like superhuman because they can't feel pain, and so they will literally like, you know, they say you only use so many, so much of your muscle strength fibers. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So like, but the unless you're on PCP, your body is that, right? <laughs> yeah. But the reason for that is. <laughs> <laughs> because the reason for that is like you would hurt yourself like you'd tear yourself apart yeah. so like zombies are able to just like you know fucking overexert over the point their or, jaw that or yeah. like where they could just probably chomp through your fucking skull or at least make like a dent yeah but what's gonna yield first like a skull or a jaw like I don't know, maybe I'm wrong I think the skull is pretty pretty um if you were like willing to bite on something long enough that it would um fucking break your jaw off I'm pretty sure you like if one zombie sacrifice every time it fucking breaks the jaw into its, your brain it doesn't matter you're dead yeah, yeah that's true and then the next one takes its place and eats the brain but so you just you're just okay with losing a troop to get to that sweet sweet brain is that yeah <laughs> that good brain I'm describing it you're like, you're like summarizing it I mean, we're having a conversation. Well, the camera adds 10 pounds. Well, like, uh, yes, it does. I should have shaved. Yeah, I've I put on some weight recently myself. I'm I ate an entire pizza yesterday. Uh, <laughs> and then I was so thirsty, and I, but I took a nap instead. So I'm just like constantly like, oh. Going away Dude, my, my cousin James. So thirsty. Um, the, the Greek like, guy. He, he came over yesterday and bought me a pizza, you know, when I was working from home. It was great. Um... James just showed up. We ate a whole pizza together, and then he left. Nice. I ate one by myself. Nice. <laughs> Should we get a pizza? Like, I feel like it would be, yeah. be fun to grab a pizza. I would love a pizza. Uh, any, anything you want to plug while we're still on? <laughs> I feel like we need a pizza. Yeah, let's go get a pizza. All right. Thank you for coming on. God bless.